NBA All-Star Weekend comes to Charlotte in February. The longer-term question for the Hornets is when they'll bring the playoffs back to town. The men of Teal have missed out on the postseason three times the past four years. But this offseason, Michael Jordan brought in a new president and head coach in hopes of changing the direction of the franchise. What that means for the 18-19 season, next. Welcome everybody to this 10 points team preview on the Charlotte Hornets, which you'll need to know to be in the know as the season begins. Here with Drew Gooden and Greg Anthony. I'm Matt Weiner. Thanks for being there. There are new sheriffs in town in Charlotte. The Hornets hired longtime Lakers executive Mitch Kupchak as team president and Spurs assistant James Borrego as the new head coach. Borrego is one reason why Tony Parker, after 17 years in silver and black, is now a Hornet. I think uh, we have to start from scratch, you know, we have to do a whole new culture here. You know, uh, MJ decided to, to change everything, you know, all the strength coach, uh, medical, uh, everything uh, changed, all the coaches. So it's funny because I have a little advantage <laughs> with my teammates because I know the coach better than, than they do. So we just have to, to work on stuff. I know JB has a, a precise idea of what he wants to do and what he wants to accomplish, you know, uh, on the court. So my job is just try to help him out and, uh, and try to, you know, bring uh, credibility we had a lot of success you know with the Spurs but you can't take everything and duplicate everything you know so we'll take a little bit and and all the ideas that JB wants to do uh, to try to be successful in Charlotte so weird seeing Tony Parker mm -hmm. in teal get him a bigger jersey too <laughs> that jersey looking a little too small they can work on that they can work on a custom fit um, Borrego replaced Steve Clifford there what can he and Kupchak do to set this franchise out on the right path now Ooh, that, that's a good question I, I think first and foremost we got to find out is Kemba Walker gonna be a part of the solution or is he viewed as part of the problem is he gonna be a part of the long-term plans of the organization I think that's a, a, a big ask I mean you did go bring Tony Parker in and you gave him a decent contract so coach Borrego obviously with that relationship with Tony uh, I would assume he's going to play some if healthy. Uh, and, and I do think that Kemba's proven to be their best player uh, He's by far. And, and they've made a lot of personnel decisions that have gone poorly over the last several years, vis-a-vis -vis the draft in particular. And it set this franchise back. So moving forward now with Mitch Kupchak coming over from the Lakers, you know, I'd be interested to see what, what they're going to prioritize first in terms of whether they want to try to move on from some of these draft picks or are they going to try to develop some of these guys by bringing in a guy like Borrego and see what they can get out of them. Yeah. I think uh, with the moves MJ has made, I think it's just a sign of changing the culture around there. So when you clean house, starting with the GM, coaches, as many players as you possibly can and, and getting rid of Dwight Howard, I think uh, it was a concern of what direction are we going in as a franchise. And with the relationship Michael Jordan has with Mitch Kupchak that goes all the way back to North Carolina, I think he, it was a safe gamble to hire him and come in and have him have that job of cleaning the house and getting this, this organization on the right track. Well, Kemba Walker, you alluded to it. He's been an all-star there the last couple of years, but there were trade rumors even last season about Walker, who now faces free agency next summer. So... In your opinion, as we sit here right now, does he finish out the year with Charlotte? Is he there next year? Well, I'm going to be a straight shooter. Hey, if you guys, if he's in it for the long haul, why is he not extended right now before training camp? You know what I mean? If he, why I'm waiting to get, get him to free agency? He's been an all-star last two years. I think he's, uh, his work ethic is great. He's a leader. He's vocal. I had the opportunity to actually play against him a, a lot uh, throughout, you know, the, during the later year of my career. And I just saw, you know, he's tough as nails. He's a guy that you can put a franchise on their back and lead the way. But with all the moves they made this offseason, he could be on the trade block. Yeah, you know, it's going to be tough because I, I, I don't know that they necessarily want to trade him. But I think because they've made so many bad moves. Mm -hmm and sign some bad contracts. Cap situation is not um, scary. It, it puts them in a, in a bit of a pickle because I don't know that they have a lot of assets that are tradable. Uh, you you got to hope that something happens positively this year with the development of Malik Monk. Uh, does Frank Kaminsky, can he take another step? Will we ever see anything more out of Michael Kidd-Gilchrist? 
Uh, Cody Zeller. Cody Zeller. This year, hopefully. Uh, Nicholas Wood. Batum, who Nicholas they gave a boatload of money. Uh, can he somehow live up to that contract? So I think when you look at the totality of all the things they've done, it's put them in a situation where they now may have to part ways with their best player smack dab in the middle of his prime in order to have a chance to not rebuild, to start a rebuild. Right. You know, to start to build, I should say, because right now, man, they have a lot of concerns. I don't look at this as being an overly talented roster, uh, one that's going to be in a position to contend in that Eastern Conference in the near term. Well, believe it or not, Kemba Walker is their sixth highest paid player on that roster. Number one on that list is Batum, who is in the third year of a five-year, $120 million deal. And not to pick on him, he's a good player, but hasn't necessarily been that kind of a player for the Hornets. What do they need out of Batum if this is going to be a team that surprises folks and reaches the playoffs? I think uh, what they they need is a sense of urgency from Batum. I think uh, once he got the the, the the big contract, it was almost like he went on a cruise control. It would, but then you kind of want, look at his body of work that he did in Portland. I mean, he was the same player. You know, he had good players around him, but he fit in. He was the right piece of the, the intangible piece, the X factor piece that he didn't really have any pressure to score the ball. If he scored 20, it was a plus. If he scored 10, it was a plus. But now with that bag in Charlotte, excuse me, in, uh, new, um, in Charlotte, he has to come with it, yeah. and he ain't he ain't came with it yet. Well, the the problem is, I, I I think he is what he is. It's just you paid him to be something else, right? You know, you paid him to be an all star caliber player, and I don't know that that's the makeup of him from a talent standpoint. He's a really good player. He's a complimentary player, uh, but you need to have two guys who are in essence stars or superstars for him to play with mm -hmm. in order to really I think get the most out of what he brings to the table you know he's never averaged more than 14 points a game it's not right. like he's going to be a big time scorer right. you know he's going to get you three four rebounds he's going to get four or five assists he's going to play solid basketball right. but he's not going to you're not going to win because of him you can win with him but you're not going to win because of him. And that's part of their problem. They don't have enough guys you win because of. They right. got one in Kimball Walker. Yeah. And it, it's going to be interesting to see what direction they go in moving forward when you look at that roster. Well, Batum has always been sort of a Swiss Army knife mm -hmm. kind of guy, even though he's French. Um, but they're, <laughs> they're second leading returning scorer at this point with Dwight Howard no longer on the roster is Jeremy Lamb, believe it or not, yeah. under 13 points a game. The scoring may not be Batum's primary skill, but will they need more scoring out of him this, this year? I, I, yeah, with the roster makeup. And I, I think also they're hoping that they can get a, a big jump from Malik Monk. I, I do think that if that guy ends up panning out, I think now it changes everything for them because they do need somebody to compliment Kemba in that backcourt that can be dynamic, mm -hmm. that can go out and get 30 in a game. We don't know if that is where – the ceiling is for Malik Monk right now. But we also know when you look at their roster, for the most part, he's the only guy that I could even look at and think could get there. Everybody else has kind of established who they are and where they're going to be. Kaminsky can get a little bit better as well. But he's the one guy that is, to me, he's kind of like the X factor because we don't know. Can he get to another level? Can he, you know, get to a point where we're starting to look at him the way we look at Bradley Bill? We don't know that about him yet. And I think we're going to find out this season. And he was drafted for scoring. Yes. His scoring potential in the NBA. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a fan of Malik Monk. I, I feel like he should not even slip to 10. Uh, I think he's right now in that J.R. Smith uh, caliber type of player. Instant offense off the bench. You could start him. You could bring him off the bench, either or. I still think he's unproven to do it on a consistent basis. Uh, but I think he'll have the opportunity this year. Uh, Michael Jordan loves him a lot. Uh, Mitch Kupchak, you know, it, it wasn't his draft, but uh, he'll, he'll, he's willing to work with uh, other draft draft picks. And I think the great problem that the uh, Hornets have is basically their second unit is a starting unit. Willie Heron Gomez, Frank Kaminsky, Michael Kidd Gilchrist, Malik Monk, Tony Parker that, started, uh, that was a starter as a Hall of Famer coming off the bench. So they have great problems and they're deep, but we just don't know what we're going to get out of them. Hmm. I'm hearing more questions than answers. At this yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. We've got a lot more questions as well to get to on the Hornets on the other side. We'll hear from Kemba on what's ahead this season.
feeling it big time. Kimba skate through the defense and scores. Look at Kimba Walker. Oh, oh yeah, again. Entry pass denied by Kimba. Oh, Kimba. Gorgeous play from Kimba Walker. New to the roster mix in addition to Tony Parker, is Mac Biombo, who's part of a three-team summer deal, and Miles Bridges, the explosive 12th overall pick out of Michigan State. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on Bridges, how he projects as a pro? We know he can dunk yeah. <laughs> really, really well. I think there are questions about what else he can do and where he fits in in the NBA. Yeah, can he become, can that three, that wing position become his natural position? Can, can he be a perimeter player? Uh, I, I think he showed glimpses with the jump shot, his ability to get it off the bounce. Can he defend that position? I mean, he's going to also, you know, we talked about Malik Monk earlier, but, you know, he's another guy that if he's in the rotation, that's a positive sign, right? Because remember, in a lot of ways, Malik Monk wasn't in the rotation last year. So if you're going to get a lottery pick, you want him to at least be in the rotation. That gives you a chance. And, and I think if he shows enough in training camp, and finds himself in that position, that's a positive for this organization. I think just being a lottery pick, you never want to go to an organization where you're the third option off the bench behind Batum, behind Michael Kidd, Gilchrist, who are already proven. So therefore, right now, his antennas are up where he's going to have to work, maybe have to play some time at the four. And the way the league is going, I could see him surviving at the four, playing some stretch four at times. But like you said, you are who you can guard. Yeah. So if he can show signs of defensive, of playing defense on the perimeter and down low, he'll find and earn some minutes out there on the floor. And one thing to mention about him, too, the advantage he has as a young player, when I go in and I see Nicholas Platoon and I see Michael Kidd Gilchrist, yeah, they're really good players. But ain't, they ain't now one of them ever got 20 a night in the game. Yeah. Like, if I can go in and score that position consistently, mm -hmm. I'm going to have a chance to get sure. minutes. So he's thinking that way or should be as a young player who's, you know, been a, he's been a top-tier guy his entire life, and if he has that confidence, he's going to have a chance. Well, for the time being, the scoring begins with Kemba Walker. He recently spoke with Roe Parrish about the season ahead. We have a brand-new teammate in Tony Parker who spent years in San Antonio. How's the interaction been between you so far, and, and what are you looking forward to learning from him this season? Uh, the interaction has been... It's been A1, man. We we get along really well. You know, we, we actually talk a lot. Um, as far as me learning from him, I mean, anything he has to offer. Um, for the most part, I want to. I think I want to learn, you know, just how he how he manages to be really efficient, you know, with his in-between game, you know, you know, finishing at the basket and, you know, his little runners and flows and things of that nature. So I think I'm going to be picking his brain on that a lot. Now, you talked about the runners, of course. Those are legendary. He did that when he was in San Antonio winning yeah. championships. James Borrego also comes over, who's the new head coach. What has he established so far as far as the team's new identity? Um, you know, I think for the most part, he established um, a very healthy, uh, talkative culture. You know, we, he wants us to interact more, um, you know, communicate more, which is, of course, important in, in the game of basketball. You know, you have to be, you know, you have to communicate with your teammates. And, you know, I think that's something that he really established early. And um, I'm really excited about that. I think last year, that's what we lacked. You know, we didn't communicate enough. So this year, I think a lot of the focus is going to be on our communication and our camaraderie. So being a winner, you're going to have to have definite contributions. Now, Miles Bridges, that's your lottery pick. He comes in. He was impressive in summer league. What have you seen from him so far that impresses you, and do you think he'll be able to contribute as a rookie? I think so. I think so. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan. Um, the thing that impresses me the most is, is his work ethic. Um, you know, every time I come to the gym, you know, he's, he's here. He's, he's getting his work, especially for a young guy. You know what I mean? Um, and another thing is, you know, when you when you when you tell him something, you know, he he immediately tries to tries to do it, tries to add it to his game, and I think that's really impressive. Um, you know, you need young guys who who wants to learn, who wants to sew things up, who wants to learn from older guys, and um, he's one of those young guys, and um, that's that's what's really impressive about him. 
So we see that LeBron has gone west. It appears to everybody that the Eastern Conference is wide open. What is it going to take for the Hornets to get back into that top eight and make the playoffs? Yeah, we got to be consistent. We got to be consistent, man. Every night, you know, we, we, we have to know who we are. Um, if we're losing, you know, we have to remain the same. Um, if we're winning, we have to remain the same. And I think, I think that's where that's where TP comes in this year for us. Um, you know, his leadership. You know, he's the vet. He's the oldest guy on that team, and he he knows what it takes to to win in this league. And you know, we're gonna be leaning on that man a lot. So, you know, I'm looking forward to to learning from him and you know, see what he has to offer to our team. So you have a new coach, a new general manager. Is there going to be a new contract on the horizon for Kimba Clutch? Is he going to be staying in the Queen City? What's going on? I hope so. I hope so. Um, I think so as well. So I don't know yet, but you know, going to go through this season. I'm going. I'm going to play my butt off just like I just like I do each and every night. And um, you no, know, whenever the time comes, you no, know, we're going. We're going to get it right. That is the question, isn't it? Coming up. What the Hornets were up to this summer, including trick shots from Jay Triano. Nice. That's nice. That's Canada deep. That's what that is. Plus, we'll hear from the starters when we come back. A couple of years ago when he was with Toronto, Bismack Biombo joked during a playoff series that he wasn't afraid of LeBron. He's afraid of Lions. Smart. This summer, he confronted that fear, at least from outside a fence during a visit to his native Africa. Back to the safer confines of our comfy studios and the starters. Trey and Tass of the starters here for the next point on the Charlotte Hornets. So a little true or false here, Trey. True or false, the Hornets should trade Kemba Walker this season. I think the easy answer is true. Kemba is 28 years old, heading into his eighth season. The Hornets have only been to the playoffs twice while he's been there. They haven't won a series yet but I'm going false because it's not that simple. Trading Kemba doesn't instantly start a rebuild. Nick Batum still on a big contract. Same with Bismack Biombo. There are a few other players on the roster who are probably not living up to their deals right now. So that's a lot to get done to truly rebuild. So that's why I kind of think maybe the Hornets should just run it back, hope things click, make a run at the playoffs. Nobody expected them to win 48 games in 2015-16, and they were able to do it. The East is probably a little bit weaker this year. This could be, if things break right, a playoff fringe team I would if I were the Hornets that's what I would try and do yeah I would probably test it out these first few months and see what happens I just think there's so much leading into Kimba Walker's first free agency that leads me to believe that he's probably going to bounce and that's why you may be true sure. you know at this point he's 28 years old you said his eighth season with the Charlotte Hornets he's going to be their sixth highest paid <laughs> player going into this year and, and no fault to him for signing four for 48 back then, but so many guys ahead of him. I don't know how much he can get next year in free agency sure. with the Charlotte Hornets. He can probably get some more elsewhere, like the New York Knicks, for example. <laughs> I know that's been the rumor forever because he kills it at MSG. But to me, that makes a heck of a lot of sense. And, and again, not a lot of success. Uh, it just feels right. Going into me agency, <laughs> it just feels like he's going to take care of himself next year. And that's why you probably suss it out a little bit around February. Maybe we can get a good package because they're going to have to blow this up at some point. Because I mentioned there's five guys ahead of him on that, that payroll, and they're not doing all that well. That's right. There haven't been a team that has totally lived up to expectations after that surprising 15-16 season. Getting back to the playoffs seems to be the peak for this team. So maybe you're right. Maybe come February time will be uh, the Kemba Walker sweepstakes. We shall see. All right. That's it for us. More on the Hornets coming up. And to get more of the starters, check us out weeknights on NBA TV at 6 Eastern. All right, guys. Thank you very much. The Hornets are in a really tough mm. spot. Uh, with regard to Kemba, their cap situation is not very good. There are a bunch of big contracts already on the books. Even if they move him at the trade deadline, say pick up a first-round pick and an expiring contract, that doesn't really accelerate yeah. the rebuild, right? Because they've still got all this money on the books. Yeah, it, it's going to be a challenge. And, you know, trading him, remember, he only makes $12 million this year. So if you're Charlotte, you'd probably like to be able to package – some of the bad contracts that right. you have with him uh, and try to get young talent back that way. And there, there are teams out there that are looking for point guard help, Phoenix being one mm -hmm. potentially. So the possibility will exist. Mitch Kupchak is an experienced, savvy front office type. Uh, and I do think they have to try and explore that uh, because, look, if you gave Batum that contract, 
that's the starting point, I would assume, with, with Kemba in terms of a long-term Pretty, term pretty hard to argue uh, uh, you could offer him less. Yeah, in a small market team like that, I'm not sure they're in a position where they're going to want to be floating with or, or flirting with the luxury tax. So perplexing to say the least in terms of what's going on in Charlotte right now. I just as simple as this. They have a lot of money and they're not getting out of production for what they're paying for. So Kimba's up for a big a big deal. Like I said, if they saw him in their future plans, they would have extended him or at least offered him an extension to turn down. Has that happened? We don't know. But from the looks of it, they're trying to see this season of where we are right now. We're a top five team on the on the for a salary cap. Where are we at? Can we win with this group? And if you start seeing about December, January, about 25 games in, you're going to have your identity. Right. You know, everything's kind of is going to sit down. Who's doing what? Who's really work? It might be a different conversation right now about Batum come December. He might be averaging 20, but we don't know that yet. And, and nor does Mitch Kupchak, the coaching staff, or the players. So I think going forward, you see what they do to about December. And then if it's not looking good, if you're in that eighth, ninth seed and you need to, you think you have potential to ha- make a playoff uh, run and stay in that uh, contingency, I think it's uh, you pull the trigger. And, and keep in mind, Kemba still has the leverage because if he doesn't want to sign with a team you want to trade him to, right. it's very unlikely that that team's going to trade for him. He's unrestricted. So it's not as easy as say, okay, well, this didn't work. We're going to move him. No, you know, he's going to have to sign off on where you trade him right. if you want to receive assets back. So it, it's going to be a challenge for a new coaching staff, new system, new front office this upcoming season. It is a puzzle to be solved yeah. in Charlotte. Kemba or no Kemba, what will the standings say about the Hornets at the end of the season? Drew and GA have their best guesses when we return. It's a season full of ceremony in Charlotte, starting with opening night, October 17th. Muggsy Bose, Glenn Rice, Larry Johnson, all honored. Tony Parker back in San Antonio on January 14th. All right, more or fewer than 35 and a half wins for the Charlotte Hornets this season. I'm going to say more. More. I'm going to say 30. Yeah, more. All right, I'm Drew. Gonna I'm going to say more. I'm going to say more. more. Oh, like East is wide you. open. East is wide open. Are you they saying like shot. playoff more? They have a de- No, I'm not saying well, playoff. 35 and a half. That's ain't the playoff. next question. Yeah. I'm saying, well, but 50 could be. More than 35 and a half. Come on, Hornets. The East is wide open. You might get to the playoffs with 35. We'll find out soon enough. Thanks for being there, everybody. We'll see you.